still here to write, but it still comes back to an accountability standpoint. If, if, if the sheriff's office is saying this inmate stayed here three days, three days, city or whomever, you owe you owe for three days. Now if that entity comes back and says, no, they were only there for two days. Guidelines, but this should be some 
time stamps that yeah. they put yeah. on, the, on the transfers. Um, okay. But are the other cities paying $42 as well or $40? Yeah, everybody went to $40 or just, just the city? Different. And they, they had all different rates for a while. Um, there's, there's rates in the state where I was going to have to have no idea how many cases. So there's no uniform rate? We don't have any of that information. If there is, we just don't know what it is. Because we just get a flat amount from the sheriff's department. A year ago, that question was asked by you all, I think, during the budget process. Yes. And uh, I recall Sheriff Prime said that previously it had not been that he had levelized everything for everybody. I believe it's a statement. Yeah. Okay. So, but I don't you know what that's so, so, I mean, it's possible that everybody is going to do 40 right. versus the 43 or even 35. Correct. But the state has a standard as to how much they pay, right? Yeah, the state has a Not fair, but can it's we say like it's going forward 
business is business. And just, I mean, I was told contracts make the best relationships. And I've learned that in my construction life. But you just got to have to have an agreement in place if the blood doesn't have to be. Well, you can believe, you can have that position. And as a commission, you can enforce it. Another entity can enter into an agreement of which you are obligated for the financial end of it, but it doesn't exist. And you can say, I want to see the contract, and then it's like, there's no contract. And in all fairness, that's how we got to where it was at now. Other people that had the authority to make agreements on how that particular issue would be handled did that, and then we were ended up trying to clean up the mess at the end of the day when nobody understood or agreed to what was actually said and done. Mm -hmm. well, my question is this. Now, I'm sure the sheriff had the right to make the decision as to how much he needs to pay. But did he have the right to make an agreement as to how much he was going to pay for the crime? Well, the, the agreement on the crime of that was that the sheriff, according to the parties involved, said if the county will not budget for the crime, if the county commission will not budget for the crime of that, I will reduce your per diem in amount to equal that pay. Does he have a right to do that? Yes, ma'am. Well, you said it's budget. <laughs> so, if you recall, when the price of the per diem went from 43 to 35, the commission at that time instructed us to reduce his budget by the sum of 165 and 65, which we did. But the numbers were spent. With the budget was numbers were 165,000 less. The expenditures were more than less. So, and then the, the city, as Stephanie's already said, reduced the, uh, the payment by that amount of money, 250,000. This is just my, my observation. I, I think it would be a bad idea uh, if the sheriff was on the same page with us, or we were on the same page with him. Be great out there. I, I think it might not be a bad idea if, 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 if you talk with him, Bill, with yourself and, and, and Joe, and, and um, see if you want to meet with us all. It don't matter, but we need to be on the same page. Yeah. And, and, and see, and, and really just, just call it again. business is business. I mean, we got a gap, a, a major gap. Well, and let me say this, I have had some conversations, and through those conversations, some of this has been somewhat cleared up. Is it still cold? No. Um, can any, and just say any constitutional officer enter into agreement and then we're left with the responsibility of paying the bill? Absolutely. Now, you've got some constitutional officers that are a lot more conscientious about what they do and how it affects the folks that has to furnish the revenue. And then you've got some that it doesn't necessarily come into consideration until, until the ones making the payments start raising the questions as to why this happened. But then after that, normally the agreement is struck and the process is already down, the wagon's out the barn and down the road, and you can't get it back in. Yeah. And I, I think you will find this when you uh, begin the budget process. Um, elected official A, whoever that is, presents you a budget that you find to be excessive, and so you reduce that amount. They spend the amount that they requested initially, but you do not. You complain that they went over the budget their statement to you and all their constituents is if you had given me the money I asked for, I would have gone over budget. So you have the responsibility of setting the budgets 
for the constitutional officers, elected officials. But you don't have the responsibility to administer that. So it, it's constantly a tug of war. It, it's where it's at. It's always the devil's in the details, and typically we're the devil because we're not giving, we're not grading some of the budgeting funds that some of them are asking for because you just don't have it you know, to give. So you have to make a cut. Make their cut from their budget for their budgeting ass. My, my other side of that, that coin was, um, you know, when we said we was going to do a new jail, we did a new jail, and I was under the impression that we were going to do away with the, the old jail. And, and now that we're, we're doing these repairs to the old jail, it seems like they want to bring more inmates in. Uh, and and I, I see that as problematic. Well, that's what you're I, I do, but there's a, that's also a societal issue that we've got. We can't, the sheriff now over there, over he can't say, okay, we've got space for two today, go out and get us two. Plus, that's not how it works. It has to do with the number of arrests that's being made for breaking the law on the streets and whether or not that's a, a, an incarcerated offense and then we're told them. They can't do anything about that. And then, the, then, then on the other hand, we're under a certain set of guidelines from how how your uh, population numbers needs to be on, in the space. So where we're at is, is rather than the reason that decision was made, okay, they were getting at the point of the need to have to go out there and build another pod or back up and remodel a pod that you got, which, which was a lot cheaper than going out and building a pod. A complexity that's associated with managing the jail and the building of the facility is the classification system which I think you referred to in that uh, inmates are classified based on the severity of the crime for which they're charged and you cannot put a minor offense in with a major offense for lack of a better description and that happens, you have to do that as well for males as females. And the contact between those two cannot be uh, visual. And so there's all these kind of restrictions that makes the space allocation uh, complex. But that being said, it happens all over the state of Georgia. 365 days a year and all over the United States as well. So, uh, but it doesn't change the, the impact when you sit down to look at your budget or the budget request that you are going to be presented and you have to determine is that a realistic number that's being submitted to you for the request that is made. And, you know, last year I think in one case we had $4.2 million increase above the previous year if that had been granted. Well, if that had been granted, the commission would have increased the millage by more than the amount they did. So, I, I, I guess the only, only the other side of that that I'm, I'm referring to was we, I mean, the county paid for those annual bracelets. And under the pretense that it was going to free up space, and, then, and even the new jail, right? And so you got people out there getting productive members of society working and everything else. But just as fast as you put the bracelets on it, it was filling, I mean, it, it, it filled back up instantaneously, all yeah. I'm saying. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. You know, did, it, did that alleviate, did the ankle bracelets alleviate some population issues? Yes, it did. I mean, it did help. But there again, the need for the space. For the criminals in our in our community or in our society, still continue to rise up. You had 50 taken out of uh, yeah. population, and you had 65. To and, and I guess yeah. what I'm saying is, by it happening so fast, it almost seemed like when you had it made sitting there, nobody was needing to go to jail. But all of a sudden, you put all these out uh, when they were so All of a sudden, you got you did 60 on something that's going to get away. Well, maybe what we need to do is expand our catering system. 
do you have enough information of what's provided to you to give the commission a breakdown of what actual jail inmate housing cost is? In other words, what the expenditures are versus the revenue that's coming in. So that we can look at that number and see. I think that's what you're asking for. Yeah, I may have to do something because they, the sheriff's department makes a lot of their administrative costs like all of their office supplies and things like that mm -hmm. out of the jail and all that. I mean, I have to do a little bit of yeah. Do you give a rough number? I can come up with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay.